I was inspired to attend medical school when I was a fifth grade student. My teacher, her name was Martha Daly, uh, she recently passed away. She gave us a project to assign us with the idea, if we have the greatest power in the world, what would we do with that power? And from that time forward, I always had an interest in helping the underserved and the underrepresented minorities because I saw that in Baltimore, mostly minorities were the ones suffering from HIV and AIDS. Uh, my father was an educated man who told me a long time ago that if you want to be a physician, then you just need to trust and follow the path. Um, undergraduate school, medical school, and residency, um, it's a path that's it's laid out for people who are disciplined and committed to the task. Medical school is uh, certainly a, a marathon. You have to be emotionally um, prepared for it. You got to be disciplined because there's so much to do and so much to learn. I think for me, my faith being a Christian and really knowing that this is something I thought was meant for me also helped me get through it and uh, we participated in, in church. We had a nice church home that we went to, my wife and I, my daughter. That was a big help. But, but for me, seeing that goal, just being able to reach the goal was something that I always turned to to realize that this is hard and it's grueling, but at the end of this, I'm going to be a physician. It's something I've dreamed about and hoped for my whole life, and I was just determined to get through. I was recently talking to a, a friend of mine, and I asked her, uh, what causes people from foreign lands to come here and to pursue medicine? And she made a very profound statement, and it's impressed me to this day. And she said, we come hungry. And when she said that, I thought back to when I was going to medical school. It was the hunger to do something better than the env environment that I was raised in. And that hunger just kept burning and burning and burning as I went through medical school. The long hours, the sleepless nights, all of that wasn't my stamina, it was the hunger inside of me that wanted to see myself do better than what I'd seen all my life. You know, as I think back in medical school and I look at many of my counterparts, I was a little bit envious of those that came from other countries because they had a culture and they had something to go back on. But I'm saddened to say that today's African-American man, we have no culture. Our culture is pretty much determined by what we see on TV and what we hear on the radio, and that limits the choices that we have. So for me to be a physician and don the white coat is more than just a symbol of hope to those that I'm, I see every day in the clinic, but also a hope to the community that, that they too can also be a physician. What I learned in college was just to do the next thing, figure out whatever the next thing was, and to do that. When you complete that, you do the next thing after that. So I never felt that I got really overwhelmed with the, with the work I was required to do because I was just focused on whatever that next thing was and that got me through medical school and residency. When, when I went to medical school, obviously the tuition was a lot lower. Um, not that I'm metal, but the tuition was a lot lower. Um, and and I, I was probably naive in that respect. I, I, I decided I didn't want to take out a whole lot of loans and so that's why you heard me say I, I worked. I think that was probably, if I had to do it over again, that may have been a mistake. Uh, I think it gave me a lot of fortitude, but it also uh, made me, you know, not enjoy it as much as I could have. I didn't pay off my student loans until it was time for me to pay for my daughter to go to college. So that was, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty remarkable thing, but it's true. And certainly as president of Meharry, one of my goals is to try to reduce the debt burden for the students that come to our institution because we'd like our students to choose primary care. And if you graduate medical school owing a lot of money, that may be a choice that one cannot make simply because of the financial burden that one has. But that's always been an issue and certainly it's one we're, we're being focused on. I had uh, a Mrs. Smith in my life. Uh, Mrs. Smith married the principal of our high school and she called me off the side one day and then she basically almost said the same thing. You are destined to be on that street corner. You saw you this and you're that. You're not this and you're not that. Well, at that time, I had the big head, okay? I mean, I knew I could do anything I wanted to do, but I was an amazing student. 
but my reaction was just a little different. I said, hey, I'm gonna prove to you that you are wrong, you know. And, uh, and so then I got everything together. And when I finished med school, Mrs. Smith invited me to her house. And she says, you know, Sonny, well, that's what they call me at home. Says, I think if I had not said to you what I said, you would not be who you are today. And she always called, said to my mama, that's my son, you know, as well. So I think it goes two ways. That sometimes you could, you could paint that picture of that individual and say, is that where you want to go? Or do you want to go in another direction? And I think it's how you say it, though. There are a few barriers uh, African-American males face when it comes to entering medical school. One is we, at times, can be our greatest enemy. What I mean by that is we can have a sense of mediocrity is all that we can accomplish in life. Or we can be self-complacent. Or we can handicap ourselves by providing excuses for the limitations that we impose upon ourselves. So as a result, I come to understand that there are several opportunities that African-American males definitely can have presented to them. But if we do not accept the opportunities, if by chance we are crippled by our own self-limitations, then as a result, we will not accomplish applying to medical school or enrolling in medical school. If we don't believe we can achieve, then, then we won't even attempt to overcome this obstacle. And there's not enough examples in the community, there's not enough examples that the media portrays on television that allow those kids to want to dream. So the barrier will have to start if we start to focus on black kids, middle school, high school, and give them opportunities to see, to see and understand the scope of the problem. The scope of the problem, you know, it, it amazes me that only 4% of the nation's physicians are black. Only 4%. And Mahara Medical College is largely responsible for that 4%. We need more Mahara Medical Colleges, but this, it's not going to be enough. So we need more of our majority institutions to take a chance on individuals, regardless of metrics. You know, the, if the mission and the desire is there, then the support should be there. I think that this should be given an opportunity. Because in a lot of ways, our stories are no different from theirs. I come from a very disadvantaged background. Um, I didn't have any black physician role models to look to. All I had was books to read and my, my mother and my, I don't know, my relatives to encourage me. But I think the one thing we can do is to present role models to the kids as kids, as young as third or fourth grade, to get them to start to see that this is possible for them, right? And uh, I think if we can do that and do some other things to make sure that's, that's, that students are sticking with it, we can have an impact on this problem. We, in fact, we don't have any choice. Uh, one, of the, one of the aspects of health disparities is the low number of minority physicians that there are. And that's not to say that majority physicians don't care about minority patients. But the truth is, um, there's a comfort level and a cultural aspect to this that can only be satisfied when you're being treated by someone who looks like you. And uh, given the fact that there's so few black physicians who are male, first of all, there's a low number of black physicians, period. But an even lower percentage of those who are male. And that's something that we can do something about. And we have to. We must. And we will.